I am, my name is Anthony Miranda. I, I'm at Fresh Meadows, Queens, with my wife and three boys. I'm just like you. I've raised my family here. We came here to Queens to look for better education, open space, and an opportunity to grow our families and grow with the community. I did 20 plus years in the New York City Police Department and retired as New York City Police Department Sergeant. I also was later appointed as the Chief of Police for the Administration of Children's Services, where I spent two and a half years in that agency. And then now I've decided to work with Queensborough President. And that decision was really based on the fact that I saw things happen in the community, and as I started walking around with my family, we struggled for a number of reasons. One, I have a 12-year-old son, and he's now going to Bell Academy in Bayside, but I couldn't go to the school that was right across the, ro right across the road from me, right, because it was not in my zone. So I was in a two-tier zone where I had to travel with my son to be able to go to school. I was challenged by that process. In addition, I started walking around the neighbors and I say things are changing. Not only close to me, but across Queens. Because they're building these luxury high-rise buildings that are only for those who are rich and famous, right? They're not for the people in our community. They're not meant to benefit our community. They are taking the resources from our community and they're straining what little we have already. And they're not making decisions based on anything that makes sense, right? If our schools are overcrowded, if we're losing housing, affordable housing is not available to us, and then the transportation system is already crowded. The streets are crowded. We can barely find parking, right? But we can definitely find the traffic agent giving us tickets every morning, right? So imagine we're suffering all these things and they're building these luxury high priced buildings that are pricing us out of our own communities. We're not the people they're building it for. They're building it for people outside of our community to come in and take advantage of what we lived here so long. I say that the people who lived here and have lived through what we call the tough times now when things are good, they want to move us out. So we have to fight to hold on to what belongs to us. We have to fight to have the open space. We have to fight to make sure that there are people like you and I that are still controlling things in this community, right? So my vision for Queensborough Hall is as I talk to people, they want to see somebody who works in Queensborough Hall who A, is going to have to fight for them. Who's going to hear your voice and decide, I'm going to represent you. I think too often, politicians come in front of you and they make promises. And after they get elected, they forget who you are. So I stand on my record for 30, more than 30 years, I've been a civil rights activist, defending the rights of people, not only law enforcement officers, community residents. When we live here, we want to be protected. We don't want to be over-policed. We don't want to be abused. We don't want to be disrespected. And we don't want to be investigated simply because of the way we look. True? Yes. Yes. So it's our time. And I say for an independent voice, I'm the only candidate that is not an elected official. And I say that with pride. I don't think any other elected official come up here and say that with too much pride. But I'm the only one running that is not an elected official. And that's because I'm a community resident who just got tired of people making promises and not keeping them. Tired of going to their offices and asking them for help. And they're just not there for us. There's an opportunity for us to make change and to have a strong voice in Borough Hall. You would want to go to Borough Hall and have somebody who looks like you and speaks like you, like I do, right? And we want to be welcome there. We don't want to have to bring a translator with us every time we need help. And Borough Hall should be a place where we get services. But how many people actually go into Borough Hall? Some people don't even know what the function, functionality of the Borough President is. The reality is they're supposed to be your advocate. And they're supposed to be the chief organizer for the Borough, for all the political issues that we have here. Because unfortunately, Congress people get money for our district. Assembly people get money for our district. State senators get money for our district. City councilmen get money for our district. But there's no coordination of services. Queensboro Hall is supposed to be that place where there's an overall plan for the entire borough of Queens. We want to know all the buildings of education that are being built. We want to know about all the properties that, all the public spaces that are being sold to private, private people, right? To make a billion dollars on our backs. We want to know that information. We want full disclosure. And I think for the most part, most people don't even know the projects that are ongoing here. It's a mystery. You see it after they start building it, right? And then you wonder what was their process because they never came to the community and asked us if we wanted these things in our own areas. They keep, they keep us out of the conversation and they keep us in the dark. So we want Borough Hall to be an open space, open to all the different communities. You feel like it's your home, you're welcome to come in. There's services there and there are people there to service you. So in saying that, I'm asking for your vote and your support because I think your vote is going to make all the difference in the world. What they're doing now in a special election is they're discounting our communities. When I go to certain 
churches, you know, they turn around and say, uh, Hispanic churches, well, they're, they're illegal, right? And then I go to other communities and say, they don't vote. The fact that they can still say that today and criticize our communities that way, I'm challenged by that process. So when I talk to people, I say, we want our voices to be heard. We want it to be heard all over, all over the borough of Queens and in the next borough also. And this is the opportunity, the special election, they're not expecting us to turn out. They're not expecting to get that vote. And I'm telling you that your vote is going to matter. That election is going to be decided by those people that come out and vote. It's going to be cold, right? They're going to build an election in the middle of the winter. It might be snowing outside and it'll be very cold. And they're not going to expect us to show up because 10% of our community votes. Less than 10% will vote when the weather's bad. So my encouragement to you is saying, no matter what the weather is outside in the special election, your vote matters. You don't want to lose an election by 60 votes. You don't want an election stolen by paper ballots. We want to win the election outright by the people coming to exercise their right to vote. And that's going to be your voice. Don't let anybody discount your community or the power of your vote. I'm looking forward to having your support. Your voice is a strong voice. You have a lot of power to make a difference in all the elections that are going to happen now. Don't allow anybody to discount you. Discount your voice, discount your vote. It's a powerful time. It's a time for people. And this is where the politics change. Politics normally is heavy at the top, right? They make all the decisions, then they tell you what you're going to get. What we're bringing to Borough Hall is decisions being made with the people, conversations and openness, and this full disclosure. You will have a voice and the decisions of the changes that are going to be made in Queens. And then we act on your behalf. That's different. I'm making you a promise of this. Queensboro Hall will be open. It will be diverse. It will have representatives from all our communities. And we will keep our word when we say, when we say where I came to you today, I'll be back here after we win the election, and you'll still be my friends. You'll still be my partners in this process, because we need partners. We don't want to have an issue or have a fight where we're standing by ourselves. If I'm standing in front of somebody for having a fight about some issue, I'm representing you. I'm going to stand with you. And I want to be your partner. So again, I thank you for the opportunity of coming here. And it's a thank you pleasure.